Feeling hungry, grab a snack. Yeah, check. You gotta be strong in this life, son. Check, I'm check. Check. I will survive. I will survive. And I'm a firm believer. <sighs> right along, right along. Welcome to the ride. Welcome to Tuesday. This is Tuesday, aka my Monday. Because for me, it's like Monday. Because the whole of yesterday felt like a Sunday. It was a holiday here, Memorial Day, Monday. And I don't know, the whole day just felt like a Monday. But the whole day I'm thinking it's Monday. And the whole day yesterday I thought it was a Sunday. Felt like that. How you guys doing? Welcome to the ride. Welcome to the ride. As you come and share the thing and say, I share. Also, let me know if you're hearing me live. Let me know if you hear me. If you hear me clear, put two thumbs up. If you hear me clear, put two thumbs up like so. Let me make sure that you guys hear me clearly. Because, because, because. Oh my God, we got a lot to talk about. Let me share the thing on mine. Let me share the thing. Let me share the thing. Let me share the thing, guys. Let me share of the thing. <laughs> ah, boy. Nice. Hey, how you doing, Lydia James? How you doing? Hi. Now, listen, I want everybody to share. Okay, Glennis, you hear me good? Everything is good? Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Lacey J, how you doing? Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Lacey J, you hear me good as well? Let me share. Let me share. I share. Nice. Nice. Share it over here. Share one more, one more group. There we go. <laughs> you see, Lacey J already cost me for my trivia on Friday. You see, a little, uh, you see, a little, a little, a little have, 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 have a pity on me. Eh? Oh Lord, oh Lord, Lydia. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How you doing? Um, Dai Lang, how you doing? Big up yourself. Welcome to the ride. Sonia, how you doing? Raymond Nelson. Hi right, guys, listen, before we start the program, right? Let me tell you this. Um, today we have um Minister Nicholas Steele, who's going to be on right along today, right? Uh, he is going to be joining us very, very shortly. But before he, we bring him in, I want you guys to get your questions together, all right? Because over the past, over the past couple months, I've been getting nonstop calls, nonstop voice notes about protocols and vaccine and procedures and all of these things so i decided to make the call today to have the minister come on out although he's very busy obviously been very busy he's been on the program before but we haven't had him on right along for like months right so he's on here today so i want you guys to get all your questions ready so we're going to be opening up the phone lines and taking calls all right there has been a lot going on within this past couple months and the minister hey, let, let's put it plain he's going to be in the hot seat um he's going to be in the hot seat because there are so many things that people are trying to get answers to there are so many misunderstandings there's so many misinformation that's circulating and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put a stop to it today we're gonna get that information today all right so minister still is going to be joining us shortly so in the meantime i want you to tag a friend because there are a lot of people who want to get this information that may not have gotten notification. 
Um, so I want you to tag them right now, okay? All right, all right, Lacey J, thank you so much. All right, Lacey J, who else? Who else? Darren Lang, yes. Darren Lang says he's ready, trust me. Lady, I see you. All right, everybody, everybody share. Kibbs, are you doing good night to you, Kibbs? I know it's night where you are. All right. And listen, another thing, guys, I have to say before we bring on the minister, right? Um, just as every guest that we that that we bring on the program, we demand that everybody that everybody treat the guests with respect. I don't care if you like politics, you don't like politics. There is a way. There's many ways to disagree with someone, to ask a question without disrespecting the person right so we want to maintain that certain level of respect for the duration of the program here today okay all right we, we got a deal we, we we here we got an understanding all right all right Esslin McIntosh how you doing another thing I want to say before we, we bring on the minister is that earlier on today earlier today in the press conference that was held on uh, the the uh, post cabinet briefing Spice Girl how you doing pick up yourself uh for only on the press cabinet briefing there was uh they made mention of a particular incident that occurred actually two two particular incident one incident involving a young man who was said to be uh of grenadian national living in trinidad and tobago who came across into Karaku and somehow ended up in grenada and he's somehow on the run well pff, listen we got a chance to speak to the family member and the story as posted and as presented on other platforms as far as what we're hearing from the family it is incorrect right i want to also get the minister's um latest on that as well but as far as what we're hearing from the family we just spoke to the family i just spoke to the family just moments ago the information as presented in regards to um this young man by the name of jimmy brave boy who is said to be somehow on the run that information as presented is factually untrue right um i'm going to give you guys more details on that right i'm going to give you guys more details on that but it was uh, it was presented the information was presented earlier today this morning on the post cabinet briefing uh the information said the minister said the at uh, the first post cabinet briefing that um the young man was somehow on the run uh, he's from Trinidad and Tobago, and then he went in Caracu, and then he just ended up in Grenada. Um, as far as what we're hearing, and as I said, I'm going to give you guys more details on this particular story. The information is not as was presented earlier today. Okay? All right, that's what we know right now. And that's another question I want to pose to the minister as far as how that those information was retrieved because i just got off the phone with a family member and they say no so not so the story ain't go so right i've been seeing a lot of people posting information on the social media they said that the um they said that the the young man is somehow on the on the loose on the run uh fear of of coming from trinidad where trinidad have a high um covid and and a, a certain um certain levels that certain um, um variant that they don't want to get into grenada so they claim the claim was that he came from trinidad he he came on a speedboat he went into Caracu. we jump on he jumped on a speedboat from Caracu, and uh he, sorry jump on on the osprey in Caracu and ended up in grenada um Yo, show me some the family is saying hold on let me see yeah the family is saying that 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 information is not correct and again i'm going to tell you guys what is the correct information as we're hearing from the family also before we bring on the minister i gotta tell you guys this now mavis who is a avid viewer of the program she had a cell phone that was she had her, 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 her a family member of hers in grenada who had a cell phone that was stolen and we posted a picture of that cell phone and we're going to give you guys some more information on the person who took that cell phone all right guys and um that is that is not good and we're looking to get our cell phone back for, for for the young man whose cell phone was stolen in some place in Grenville. Hey. All right. You gotta be all right. Good night, lady. How are you doing? How are you doing? So, guys, you guys got all your questions ready for the minister? You guys got all your questions ready for the minister? 
Peter. <laughs> keep sharing, guys. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. The minute, the, listen, the minister says he's coming in when the numbers reach up to 200. So we had 156, 162 right now. We need more shares. We need more shares. Only need to share a little bit more. If you share it once, I want you to share it one more time. If you share the program once, I want you to share the program one more time. All right? If you share it once, I want you to share it one more time before we bring on the minister. Seven one eight seven zero one five seven two zero. That that is the number. But you don't, you don't have to call this number now, guys. All right, you don't don't call this number now. I want you to call this number when we open up the phone lines. I see the calls already started started to come in, but the phone lines are not officially open as yet. Okay, with your questions. I need more shares. I need more shares. I need more shares. I need more shares before we bring on the minister. I need more shares before we bring on the minister. We need some more shares before we bring on the minister. You gotta be I share Jackie Chaitan, you share. Donna Rush, I see you. I see you, you share. Veronica, Veronica, share. Genevieve Gita, you share. Big up yourself, big up yourself. We gotta bring up the numbers a little bit more. G and Fraser, how are you doing? Katy. Katy Cox in London, you share. Thank you so much. Yeah, we gotta bring up the numbers. Bring up the numbers a little bit more. The minister is coming. Let me pull him in the back. And 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 there are some people who may not have gotten notification for tonight's program, and they some of your friends that may want may may want to travel so i want you guys to take this opportunity to tag them okay i want you guys to take this opportunity to tag them it's going to be good information for them all right all right before we bring on the minister let me play this clip right here um it's to vaccinated people um and the entry protocol coming into grenada check this out. Okay, folks, listen. Before you purchase a ticket, before you book a flight to go into Grenada, I want you guys to watch this video. In fact, I want you to watch it and share it to all your family members and friends who are about to book their flight to go into Grenada, Carico, and PT Martinique based on the new protocol for vaccinated people. All right? Today is the 20th day of May 2021. I say this date because things changes regularly and rapidly, right? So this is as of today, May 20th, 2021, because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten calls because a lot of people didn't quite understand or because they are somehow fallen victim to the vagueness of how the protocol have been written for vaccinated people. I'll explain to you what I'm talking about shortly. Let's first look at the protocol as it relates to vaccinated, fully vaccinated travelers requesting 48 hours home quarantine. Now, these are people, fully vaccinated travelers who are requesting 48 hour quarantine. As far as I understand it, right? As far as I understand it, let's go over what the language actually says. It says fully vaccinated travelers may apply for 48 hours home quarantine, providing that all members of the traveling party have been vaccinated. Parties traveling with minors do not qualify for 48 hours quarantine and must apply for seven day home quarantine. So based on what I understand from this first paragraph of the protocol is that if you're fully vaccinated, right, and you have a child in your party, you cannot apply for the 48 hour home quarantine, right? Let's take it again. Fully vaccinated travelers may apply for 48 hours home quarantine, providing that all members of the traveling party have been fully vaccinated. So if one person in your traveling party is not fully vaccinated, then 
everybody would be considered not fully vaccinated. And the request for 48 hour home quarantine would not be granted as far as what it is. All right, guys, thank you so much. Again, um, as we said today, guys, we have a special program lineup for you today. Um, uh, uh, opportunity for all our viewers to ask questions to get the latest information as it relates to vaccination, as it relates to quarantine and procedures. And we're happy to have on the program with us, I call him my good friend, Mr. Minister. Nicholas, sir. Mr. George, how are you going? And greetings to you and all of your viewers and listeners. And my apologies for being a bit late. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You had the intro, right? We're good friends. We go way back. Always, always. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you, Minister, you know, I, I was looking at back at some pictures of you, right? And I look at a picture of you last year, and I look at a picture of you this year. I would cover my hair. Yeah. <laughs> that is life. That is life. <laughs> but no, you look, you look, you look. I mean, you you look fully rested, man. I know the work is difficult. I, I, when do you get a chance to sleep? Whenever I can. Um, I, I I would say, Junior, my ability to continue is is most definitely because of the support network I have at home, my wife and family. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I, I, I'm glad that, that you're, even, you're even here to chat with us. I really appreciate it. I don't know if you have a headphone that would make the audio a little bit clearer. If, if, that, if you don't have one, then that's fine. But if you do, it would just give us a clearer audio coming in. And it, it would just, it would just um, be a, a clearer signal. If not, it's fine. Uh, no, I don't. Um, but let me get a little closer and I'll speak up a little better. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. All right, cool. Let's go right into it, Mr. Minister Steele, because we, we, I promise we have a lot to discuss. But first off, what is the current status as it relates to uh, COVID-19 in Grenada? Uh, the numbers, what are the, what are the numbers looking like? Well, right now we have zero active cases. We haven't had an active case for several weeks. We have a total of 161 persons who tested positive for COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic and regrettably one death. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, comparatively speaking, I, I got a chance to look at Grenada numbers versus all the other Caribbean numbers. And I, I think that, you know, credit to the work of the, uh, of, of, of the health, you know, we were able to keep those numbers down. What do you credit? What do you particularly credit for, maintain and sustain a very low number and at this point we we could boast and say that we have zero cases what 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 is to the credit of that well, i think it's been making decisions in a timely manner it's been getting the full support of of cabinet and, and everybody being uh, appreciative and aware of what needs to be done um, and also of significance I think for every country within CARICOM and almost every country in the world, it, it, it depends on your individual situations when you enter this pandemic and your ability to make uh, at that point, based on your financial stability or so, your ability to make certain hard calls that, that protected the country. So it's, it's a testimony to, to the work we had done previously, not knowing that there would be a pandemic, uh, the sacrifices we made to make sure that Grenada was in a, a financially stable situation. And that allowed us to make some tough decisions and not have to compromise on the safety uh, at the expense of the e economy. And that only lasts a certain length of time. It has allowed us to get to this point, but it's not indefinite. And uh, at, at a certain point, we are going to have to make certain adjustments. We see right now that we are currently in a period uh, uh, with with labor disputes, et cetera, where individuals are getting frustrated and, 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 and not necessarily, for instance, from where I sit, not being appreciative of of the reality, but from where they sit, they believe that 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 they should get what is is, is due to them. So this situation, this this peace or this safety that we have cannot continue indefinitely unless we can find a way to remove the risk. We've been able to mitigate the risk, 
but it is now extremely important that we remove the risk. And that is why right now you will see most of our efforts and most of our conversations are focusing on, like other countries, on vaccination. Right. In retrospect, what were some of the toughest decisions or some of the toughest issues that uh, health authorities and government for, for a matter had to face during the onset of the, 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 the COVID, the, 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 uh, the pandemic? The toughest decision, Junior, but that, that one is easy uh, to, to, to remember and, and to state. It was closing the borders. Yeah. It was closing our dear country to our loved ones, our friends, our family. Um, I know, and we all know, uh, uh, many individuals who were stuck outside. Mm -hmm. uh, mothers from 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 husbands and and and, and kids, uh, children from their parents, etc. But we had to make that very difficult decision. It's one of the hardest decisions I've ever participated in, and I say participated in because it was a a decision that we made as a cabinet, collectively. Um, and and that one was was difficult. Um, after that, I think way down on the list but still difficult decisions were was to close and curtail movement on mm -hmm. occasions that we had to and 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 listen to hear and and know before but see while it's happening individuals going through hardship and recognizing that the the, the, the hardship that they're going through is the price that has to be paid to prevent a greater loss greater hardship, a loss of life, et cetera. Um, so those have been the two most difficult decisions, I think, uh, for me to have participated in, in this process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen, I, I could see sometimes, Mr. Steele, I see sometimes you're sitting in post cabinet there and I could see like a stress, like, yo, I don't call my brother and tell him get some sleep, man. It looks as if like you walking over time, you burnt out. I uh, say, oh my God, I can understand the pressure. But leadership comes with that. That I mean, that's leadership for you. It's a lonely, it's a lonely experience sometimes. It it is, and it, it it's been a difficult road for us all. Um, and and I I don't hide the fact that, and I've said it a couple of times in the last week and some. I'm tired. I'm tired of us uh, 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 dealing with with COVID. And what makes it frustrating as well as tiring is that there is a way out. And in fact, having had access, ample access to vaccines since February, we actually could have been out of it by now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We, we, you know, th this is a conversation again. This is a global conversation. We're just getting the basics done. And, and I know there are so many people out in the diaspora that have thousands of questions for you. I really wanted this um, conversation to be about them, uh, the viewers, the, the people in the diaspora, and what they have to say. Um, but before we go on to open up the phone lines and get some of the calls, I want to ask you about something that was mentioned earlier today. It's very current, it's very topical, and it has to do with a situation uh, of a young man, his name was released as Mr. Uh, Jimmy Brave Boy. Could you tell us the latest on that particular incident? I know you mentioned it as someone who was uh, left Trinidad and Tobago into Grenada. What's the latest you know on that case? Well, what I, I know is that uh, Mr. Brave Boy left Trinidad and came in to the state of, of Grenada, Karakun, Piti Martinique via Karakun um, and then came into Grenada, uh, mainland Grenada. Um, I have received one report that he's no longer at large and others that he still is so i'm still waiting to hear officially uh, what the current situation is but i would expect uh, uh based on on who we are and, and who and what grenada is that with his name out there and and us knowing as 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 a people that it uh, if he hasn't been apprehended already he will be very quickly the damage and worrying part is that he was at large uh, quite likely from Thursday last week until we learned of it uh, uh, today or, or, or late last night. And as to how much he's been in circulation, who he has met, etc., that needs to be determined and can only be determined as best as possible once he's apprehended. 
um, but it could be that that he's been around enough people on, and at, at the wrong times for us, but the right times for COVID, um, that, that there's community spread or, or there's an outbreak or so. Uh, for instance, if he met with individuals who are working in large or went to uh, uh, large illegal parties over the weekend, et cetera, or so, that time would be ideal. If he came in on Thursday, met with one or two people or so, and then they went to one of those parties, or if he went yeah. to one of those parties that, that, that were illegal, that we also have uh, pictures of uh, on, on social media. Um, that is significant. If one of them visited one of our hospitals or, 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 or met with somebody who is working in one of the homes for the age um, who's not vaccinated, you know, those are the variables that, that can put us in trouble. Yeah. Funny enough, Minister, in all due respect, we got so much contradictory information on that particular story. In contact with the family, uh, we heard that the, the young man did come from Trinidad, but that was over two years now. He'd been staying in Union Island for X amount of period of time. He came into Grenada, yes, but he was staying in Union Island. Uh, so that information, I'm, I'm kind of, this information is very sketchy, but what I'm getting from the family is that's not how it, it, it is. Uh, so I don't know if, and the gentleman, he presented himself to the police station. He wasn't on at large as, so, as he was posted on social media. Uh, could you call it any, uh, any part of that story that I just mentioned? No, I don't have any of that. And what I would say is, is that we will deal with it from a health standpoint and a contact tracing standpoint once we get the relevant information. Being very much aware that, that in the past, uh, individuals who have reached quarantine have not been fully forthcoming with the information or fully honest with it. The fact of the matter is that, that by all appearances, he entered Grenada illegally and had complete disrespect for the COVID protocols, the, the quarantine protocols, and simply declaring himself as a Grenadian wanting to come back home. Right. I mean, this is a story that, of course, I know you're going to follow, but we're going to follow as well because we are in contact with the young man, well, the young man's family, uh, who's in direct contact with him, and he's feeling out some contradictory information. But that we're gonna we're gonna touch on. I want to particularly um, underscore the significance of the vaccine, and I'm not here telling anyone that they must go and take the vaccine. Uh, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I took the vaccine myself. What is the protocol? Or, or, or is, is, is the vaccine a mandatory, uh, or is it mandatory in Grenada that, that, uh, that, that you, you take the vaccine? Or what is the, what is the protocol as it relates to taking the vaccine from a worker's point of view, for, frontline worker? The, the, the vaccine is not mandatory. Right now, though, in order to, to work in certain environments, like in particular, a quarantine environment that has individuals on a daily basis coming in from high risk areas or uh, uh, the rest of the world where there is uh, 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 COVID virus in community spread in some form or fashion, then we believe that, that it is necessary that the, the individuals that work there are fully vaccinated and that someone has a choice to work in a certain environment and therefore they must meet the conditions there health wise in particular of working in that environment, or they can choose to work in another environment if they decide that I do not want to be vaccinated. But they cannot have their cake and eat it, so to speak. That's yeah. like, like honestly saying, Junior, that, that's like saying uh, an individual is an atheist, but they want to say they have a right to be a preacher. Right. They have a right to be an atheist or, 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 or to believe in a, 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 a religion, but your choice then dictates the various paths that you can take. So it's not mandatory, but it's needed to work in an environment. Yes. Where, okay, but what if that person have pre-existing condition that would then conflict with their health if they take the vaccine? Well, I, I, I do believe in those instances, an exception can be made, taking into consideration that everybody else in the work environment would be uh, are fully vaccinated and then on the flip side because it depends on the condition and it depends on the work they're actually doing 
In the same way, if somebody has a pre-existing condition, whatever it might be, it prevents them uh, or, 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 or makes it difficult, if not impossible, for them to perform certain duties. So somebody who has an autoimmune disease or so should not be, and, uh, uh, and, and honestly, an employer should not have somebody with an autoimmune disease or at risk there performing tasks, uh, interacting with members of the public that would put them at risk or at further risk. Or somebody with a communicable disease should not be performing certain duties that may put the customers at risk as well. So it is the same. It's, it, it's not a new principle. Right. It's not but it's, so it's, it's not mandatory by the government, but it's you making it mandatory for the employer to the staff. So in other words, it's still mandatory. But the, the, the law allows that. The law allows that, in my opinion, for, and, and Dr. Francis Alexis made similar comments most recently. From, from the point of view of, of the work environment, the employer has an obligation to ensure that that work environment is as safe as possible, implementing all available safety measures for his or her employees and customers. And also from a constitutional standpoint, the freedoms and rights given to individuals by the constitution in many of the instances clearly says save and accept in the interest of public health. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, the, I, I had an instant where someone called me and they were saying, uh, you know, a lot of these things, I, I also sent it off to you. They're saying that they, they personally don't want to take the vaccine, but if they don't take the vaccine, they would lose their job. They, they, they feel like they've been pressured, not by the government, but they've been pressured by the employer, which is in turn pressured by the government. Because you yourself said it earlier today that you're going to be doing inspection on, 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 uh, on, on those, those businesses who fail to meet the requirement and those businesses would be taken out of the system if they don't meet their requirements. So they have that pressure on them. So that person is saying they're sick. They don't know how they would react to the, to the vaccine, but they've been pressured by the employee to take the vaccine, who is then pressured by the government. Yeah, that, that quite likely is a situation that's existing in, 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 in many places because the employer doesn't have one employee. He has many other employees that he has to safeguard. He has to safeguard his own interests and he has to safeguard the interests of his customers. Right. He cannot put everyone else at risk to the benefit of one. And the Constitution is clear on that as well. The rights of the many outweigh the rights of the one. And one person cannot put us all at risk by driving, for instance, driving recklessly on the road. Right. Because he has freedom of movement or so. One person cannot put us all at risk, a uh, uh, public health risk, uh, by entering the state illegally and not doing the quarantine and deciding that he is Grenadian so he can go wherever he wants, whenever he wants, um, and, and infect the rest of us. So it's the same principle. Right, right. Uh, someone, uh, Nikki, on, on YouTube uh, is saying that government should, should, should know that, that some people would be reluctant to take the vaccine because they lack trust in the government. Um, um, it, and, and that goes to like the messenger, right? When you look at anything that is health related, some people rely on their doctors to, to advise them on procedures, right? Is the doctors in Grenada supportive of taking the vaccine themselves? Most, most if not all by now of our public health doctors have taken the, the, the vaccine. Most, well, all doctors uh, would be uh, subscribing to the policies, procedures, rules and regulations of the WHO, the, the, the overarching body right. of public health internationally. Um, and to the individual that says it, it's a distrust in the government of Grenada, the government of Grenada didn't develop this vaccine. And the government of Grenada isn't the only one using this vaccine. UK, this vaccine is widely used. Throughout the CARICOM, the vaccine is widely used. In fact, the AstraZeneca vaccine is the most widely used vaccine right now in terms of number of countries using it and number of individuals who have received it. So, so it's not 
an individual who has distrust of the government or displeasure with the government, that is your right. Keep your distrust of the government. Hopefully, as a member of the government, we can find a way to, to change your, your distrust, your belief of the government and the policies of the government. But this is a vaccine from the WHO, the World Health Organization that is approved. This is not a local policy. This is not a local epidemic. This is a global pandemic. And, and the world has said that, that there are vaccines that are approved that should be used as quickly as possible to prevent a global pan pandemic. Yeah. And, and I, I, I always say, and I'll continue to say it, right? I believe in the vaccine, and I think the only way out of this is by taking the vaccine. I took the vaccine myself. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but there are a lot of concern in the community about not the message, but possibly the messenger. And sometimes a lot of people um, would, come, would say, well, you come across like very harsh when you with the information. Why not educate the population about the importance of it and take it from that approach? And not come with a, a bull, like a, a bull pistol and pointing and, and demanding. How about a different approach? Like uh, possibly like Barbados were able to accomplish almost 70,000. What is their approach? What are we doing different? So it's less of the message, let's, but of the messenger. Let's, let's look at that. In, in, in fact, when, when Barbados, like us, it was in the same timelines. When Barbados introduced uh, uh, vaccinations, same time that we introduced vaccinations in, in mid-February, Barbados had an, uh, an outbreak and people were dying in Barbados. So people took the, the vaccine solution seriously and, and, and stepped forward because they knew of individuals or, or, or they had individuals that were close to them that had succumbed to the disease in one form or another. Uh, I, I think that is of significance. Same in St. Vincent, same in St. Lucia, most definitely now in Trinidad uh, uh, and, and many other countries around the world. It is, it, it is whether a population feels comfortable and that they are not at risk and, 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 and therefore take on whatever negative might be said about the vaccine more than taking on the fact that that, that brothers and sisters or, or friends and family are, are dying or ending up in hospital, etc. So, so that is of significance. The other part is that the information with respect to the vaccine and the Ministry of Health saying that the vaccine is viable, saying that the vaccine is approved by the WHO, WHO themselves providing the necessary information on the vaccine has been there since before February. The Ministry of Health has not been silent on the benefits and the need for the vaccine. Most definitely not. It is that individuals exercising their right and their choice have chosen to get additional information or information from other sources as well. And then have decided that I trust the other source as opposed to the Ministry of Health. And what I might say, or what the CMO might say, or, or, or what other members of, of the Ministry of Health, or CAFA, or regional or, or entity, might say, or other ministries of health uh, within the, the, the Karakom region. So this is a vaccine that is widely accepted in Barbados, in St. Lucia, in St. Vincent, in Trinidad, in Jamaica. So the distrust of the government of Grenada is a personal choice by individuals. The same information has been shared. The same vaccine is being used. So that is not the Ministry of Health that is at fault for not sharing information or so. It is the same information. The PR campaign has been significant. You will hear every time that I'm on, I'm talking about the vaccine. Now, now saying that how I say take the vaccine is, is going to have certain individuals make a decision as to whether they will protect themselves or not. I regret that. If you are telling me that if I said it differently, individuals would have more trust 
in a vaccine that's approved internationally. Yeah, but I, as I said, it, it's, it's, I think that it's about the messenger. Like, for instance, you say that doctors, some doctors are not willingly taking the vaccine. And some doctors would be the main inter interaction between the person, the patient, and whatever medicine they, they choose to take. And if the doctors are not recommending it, why would I take something that the doctors are not even giving me a, a, a go ahead with? So that is concerning. So that's why I said is the messenger, not so much the message. Yeah. I think some doctors are going to have a lot of explaining to do, and some pastors and some priests. Fortunately, the majority of doctors and the majority of pastors and priests and other leaders, whether they're trade unionists, whether they're opposition or so, have been on board and endorsing the vaccine and taking the vaccine. But yes, I will agree. There are individuals out there that have been trying to discourage people from taking the vaccine and using their position of authority or respect to convince individuals otherwise. That is regrettable and they will have to answer to the people as we move forward. Right. Again, guys, we're talking here with Minister Steele. Um, this again, this is your conversation. Um, we're gonna open up the phone. In fact, we open up the phone lines right now. This is the number that you could call, 718-701-5720. You could call in at any time the phone lines are open again you could express yourself emotionally whatever but we we expect everyone to be respectful on this call i plead and i thank you so much all right you i have a passionate experience express yourself but be respectful all right thank you so much um another question minister Steele, as it relates to the um the variety variety of of vaccines so far we only have the astrazeneca that's all that's been presented what about the other vaccine when would grenada have the option or grenadians have the option of all the other vaccine the pfizer's the moderna and johnson and johnson all the others even the one from cuba well the other approved vaccines we would love to have access to it and and, and i can see definitely it would be available to the grenadian public when one of two things or both things happen, that any of those others, like for instance, a Cuban vaccine, it is approved by the WHO. It is not yet approved by the WHO. And in the case of Moderna and Pfizer, and so when we get access to it, we have not been given access to those vaccines. And our decision and our choice is either we, we, we offer no vaccines to the public or we offer any and all of the vaccines that are approved by the WHO and that we have access to. And at this point in time, it is still only, not just for us, but for most of the other Karaham countries, it is the AstraZeneca. Grenada has held hard and fast to, we will not have any vaccine that is not approved by the WHO. There are other countries that have made decisions on their own that they will access vaccines that are not yet approved by the WHO because they are available and quite likely and and and, and I, I believe very safe and 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 effective as safe and effective but we've stuck to the principle in the public interest that we will not have available any vaccine that's not WHO approved and that we will have available any vaccine WHO approved that we have at Right. Okay. Let's take a call here. We got a caller on the line. Caller, where are you calling us from? New Jersey. New Jersey. Go right ahead, New Jersey. Minister, can okay, you hear the caller? I can hear the caller, yes. All right. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to thank Mrs. Steele for taking the time to explain what's going on in Grenada for us and bring a certain level of clarity the confusion we are hearing out here. And I just want to give a gentle reminder to the listeners and the callers that Grenada is not unique in the situation where employers have the right not to take the vaccine and employers also have the right to say, this is the policy and procedures if you need to work in my establishment. America is doing it, Canada is doing it, all over the world is doing it. Just as the employers have rights, the employees have rights. 
and just like some of the doctors over here exercising their, their position to um, boycott the vaccine. It's just so some of the doctors at home is doing the same thing. So Grenada is not unique to this and I don't know why people is going down on the government and on the people in Grenada. We're not unique. We have the same issues that everybody else is going through. So let's just respect each other's choices and each other's decisions. Thank you, Mr. George. Have a blessed evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. Thank you so much. All right. Um, let's, take, let's take this other call. Let me see. All right. Minister, you wanted to respond to her? Because we have, we have calls coming in like crazy. No, I, I, I support her position and I agree with her. The, the vaccine hesitancy is not a, 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 an issue unique to Grenada. And also, we need to recognize individuals deciding to take the vaccine or not take the vaccine is, is in some instances, I don't want to disrespect anybody who has decided not to take the vaccine, but in some instances, not just in Grenada, but in the US and elsewhere, is a political decision and not necessarily one purely about the efficacy of the vaccine. Right, okay. Got another caller on the line. Caller, are you live? Where are you calling us from? Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, hi, go ahead. I'm calling from Grenada. Um, I want to, I just want to give a scenario. Now, if I cook a pot of food in my house and I said mm -hmm. that this food is to be sent out to the public, but no one from, is not approved for anyone in my house to eat, and you hear that, would you be comfortable eating it? I say that to say, I listen to. Um, the President of the United States, most of the amount of vaccines they would have created and produced, and he was square to emphasize it's not approved to be used in America. All of it, and I mean all of it, is sent to other countries. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Yeah, uh, let me say to that caller that one, the caller needs to, to um, get informed as to the approval process. And, and the fact is that it is approved in the United Kingdom, it's approved in Europe, it's approved for use in, in Canada, and the, the countries that are pausing, let me be specific, I read a, a release from, from, from Public Health Canada or from certain provinces in Canada saying that they are pausing the introduction, the, the, the further use of AstraZeneca because when you read it, read it again. I'm uh, asking individuals to go back and look and read it. They're saying because they have other vaccines, they will use those other vaccines um, and that they have very low stocks of this vaccine. So because of the, the anxiety created with individuals from this vaccine, and I believe falsely, the anxiety created, they're saying that they will pause the further use of it in an effort to make sure that their public gets vaccinated as quickly as possible and takes a vaccine that they're, they're more comfortable with. Not that there is any, any issue with the safety of the vaccine. Because if, if, if we are concerned about the risk of blood clots, then we would all stop flying from New York to Grenada or Grenada to New York, because there's a greater risk of blood clots in, in simply taking that flight based on the length of time of that flight and that you're, 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 you're seated. So we have had a significant internationally individuals take the vaccine and it's been safe. The vaccine, what I want to also say is the vaccine does not give you immortality. And there are a lot of, 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 of rumors going around on Facebook and social media, et cetera, saying that this person took the vaccine and a day or two or two weeks later, they died. The vaccine does not give you immortality. It is possible that somebody will still die of something else after taking the vaccine. But that does not mean that it is because of the vaccine. Do we have any, any, any facts on record um, that anyone die as a result of the vaccine? Anything that could correlate death and the vaccine on record? I, I don't have anything from within the region, from Pan American Health Organization, but I have read from various circles and some of the, the watchdog entities that are looking at all of the vaccines 
that have also said that there have been deaths from Moderna, there have been deaths from Pfizer, there have been deaths from there are a plethora of, of, of reports, but I don't have anything conclusive that says, and if we did, we would stop using the vaccine. Remember the introduction of this vaccine and the use of this vaccine is to protect the population. Yeah, okay. Let's take this next call here. Uh, this person been holding on WhatsApp for quite a while. Uh, go right ahead, caller. Hi, this is Darren from London. Yeah, go right ahead, Darren. Right, so my question to Mr. Steele is, I'm fully vaccinated. My daughter is 12 and cannot be vaccinated. Um, so for me to come to um, Grenada, um, I need to get to Karaku. So I would need to stay in a hotel, which is going to cost me $2,310. The tests are going to cost me $1,640. And that's before I pay for taxis and food. It would be cheaper for me to charter the plane and go to Karaku. So can you give me some guidance on what you're going to do for people like myself who need to come home and visit their, their family that I haven't seen for over two years. All right, Dan, I want you to listen to his respond on the live, okay? So go back on the live and listen to his respond, okay? Because you're calling on All right, WhatsApp. Yes. All right. My, that was, that, and I see a lot of people calling on WhatsApp. Let's give him a quick second to get over there. I see everyone that's calling in on WhatsApp, and there are people that's calling on the landline as well. We're going to try to get you, but, uh, you know, just give me some time. I have, I have a lot of things that I'm trying to maneuver here. So go right ahead, Minister. Yeah, the, I mean, Junior, I said earlier, the, the, the restrictions that we've put in place have been one of the most difficult decisions that we've ever had to take. Uh, by no means was the intention to make it inconvenient or costly for you to return home. It is for us to keep our borders safe. And, and all of us, the loved ones that you haven't seen for quite some time, as well as yourself while you are here, as safe as possible. And we have been successful with that to date we've had some breaches and regrettably we've had a death but compared to other countries almost every other country we have been extremely successful with the measures that we have implemented and i will be the first to say that those measures have caused significant hardship and cost to individuals and i regret that and I look forward to the day when we can remove those restrictions. And it is possible for us to remove those restrictions once we are all fully vaccinated. You don't have those kind of restrictions if you have measles, if you have polio, if you have tuberculosis or so, because we have vaccination. We are all vaccinated for most of those. And therefore, you are not at at the risk of infecting the entire population. So as once we can get to that level of vaccine, I'm looking forward to that. And to talk specifically about your case, yes, it is possible. If you fly into Grenada and you are, you do have somewhere that is approved for quarantine in Karakou, and you are prepared to charter a flight, just your travel party to Karakou, that can be facilitated. Oh, the only reason that individuals coming into Grenada have to do the quarantine here in Grenada is because they cannot take the Osprey to go to Karakou with everybody else on the Osprey. But there have been individuals, and we are most willing to facilitate individuals who have a home in Karakou, for instance, that nobody is around or nobody is living in, and it is approved or can be approved by Ministry of Health. Then you can fly into Morris Bishop International and then you can charter airlines of Karakou or any other aircraft that you choose and go directly to Karakou from then go straight into your quarantine. Yeah. All right. Let's take this other call on the line right now. Call on WhatsApp. Go right ahead. Call, go right ahead. call on the phone line. Stand by. Go ahead. Go ahead and call on WhatsApp. All right. Um all right, well, we lost that caller on the WhatsApp. Let's take the caller on the line right now. Caller, you live. Caller, you live. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, caller on the landline, you live. Go ahead. Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from um, Brooklyn. Go ahead, caller. I'd like to correct Mr. Steele on some issues he says. 
Yes. You talk about approved vaccine. There is no vaccine that is currently approved. They are on the market by the FDA under emergency use authorization. They have similar language in Europe. Secondly, in terms of risk, Denmark has banned body AstraZeneca and JNJ. They have banned it. They says the risk outweighs the benefits. Lastly, to talk about some doctors who don't want to take it using their position of authority. What is he using? Tell me, what is Mr. still using trying to coerce people into taking the vaccines? He better do some research. All right. Uh, the emergency use is approval. The emergency use is because we have a pandemic. But the WHO has said it is approved to be used because we have an emergency here right now. And that is what we are, are, are using. Now, the various countries, again, I ask individuals to investigate a little more as to why certain countries and take note of what countries have actually said. And in many cases, the countries that are saying they are pausing the use, it is because they have excess or, 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 or much greater access to other vaccines. We are quite happy if we had a way of access to other vaccines to say that you can not just choose to take the vaccine or not, but you can choose which vaccine you want to take. But right now we can say the best vaccine to take is the one that is available, readily available. It protects you. It will prevent you from dying from COVID-19. 20 plus individuals died again today in Trinidad from COVID-19. It's been on average of 20, 507 individuals have died from COVID-19 since March, middle of March to date in Trinidad. What I cannot understand is an individual saying that the vaccine is not safe and prepared to take the risk of COVID-19, which without dispute is killing people. You're most very much aware in New York, in the US, in the UK, that the, va that the virus has killed many of our brothers and sisters. Can you name an individual that has died from the vaccine in any of those regions that you know of? But we can name numerous individuals from our diaspora community that have died from COVID-19. It is time we start looking at and hearing what all of the nations are saying. When the WHO, the European Union, and other countries in the European Union, the UK, etc., say the risk, there's a risk in taking any medication. There's a risk in taking Advil, aspirin, birth control pill. There's a risk in taking any medication. But medications are allowed, accepted, and approved once the benefits far and far, not just simply outweigh, far outweigh. And when we say far outweigh, we're talking about multiples of millions. Yeah. Far outweigh. Is there a treaty that that Grenada signed on to to not allow or not administer experimental or um, in this case experimental vaccines of any sort uh, and making it mandatory in the population? Is there any treaty that Grenada adhere to from the UN that I, that, that I saw per persons circulating this and let let me say clearly how how ridiculous that is the WHO is a part of the UN. It is the UN. The WHO has approved. So individuals circulating that disinformation, that there's some treaty from the United Nations that prevents us from using a vaccine approved by the United Nations. That is the extreme level of, of, of the ridiculousness there, there in that disinformation. That is individuals purposely trying to spread a lie. Mm. So there, there is no there is no treaty of such. Okay, let, let's go back to the phone lines real quick. Uh, let's take a call that was waiting on for a very long time on WhatsApp. Call it right ahead. All right. So once again, a pleasant good evening to you, Junior and Minister Steele. Uh, just two brief comments. The first thing is um, to provide some clarity to one of the previous callers. 
um, she spoke of President Joe Biden um, addressing the public, stating that 60 million vaccines of AstraZeneca would be shipped out of America because it is not, it has not been approved by the FDA. So um, Minister Steele's response was that they have other options, which I believe he's probably speaking about Johnson and so forth. But in his commentary, the president actually stated that the AstraZeneca was not approved by the FDA. So I would like Minister Steele's take on the authenticity of the FDA as opposed to WHO. Secondly, I'm very concerned that at this time of crisis where we're facing a, a pandemic, we're having persons coming into Grenada to play cricket at a time like this, when, when we have many events, including uh, charity events, that would be saving the lives of Grenadians. They are not being permitted, but we are having cricketers who would have possibly traveled around the world coming into Grenada just to have cricket. And we're seeing government ministers, including the prime minister, stating that persons who are not fully vaccinated would not be able to enter the, the, the cricket stadium. So how sensible is this? Okay. And that is my comments. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, All right. Minister? Yeah, with respect to the FDA approval, I, I, I think we need to question and ask what's involved in the FDA approval. Uh, AstraZeneca, the United States was involved in the, the pre purchasing of AstraZeneca, the United States has chosen or the FDA has approved US manufactured vaccines. It does not approve. A, a, a British manufactured vaccine. That is their choice as to whether, what criteria they have used. I have not heard them say that the vaccine is unsafe. I have heard them say that they're not using it for their population because they are using the US manufactured vaccines. I have not heard the president say that the AstraZeneca is unsafe. So I want to be clear on that that his, his FDA has not approved it. And the reasons being, I'm not sure. He hasn't been transparent on that, whether he needs to be or not. So why? So why? That the so, FDA has approved US manufactured and not foreign, or whether it is that, that there's some other issues. But wouldn't you agree or that, that it looks kind of in a way that we are getting, or Grenada and the Caribbean are getting the vaccine that other countries don't want to use. We're getting the the tail end of it, or the the, the bad ones, or the ones that they they choose not to to to, to administer to the population. But we are taking it, and we are administering it, and we are endorsing it. Yep, that, you see where people can get you know, that, that that that's where what some people are saying. But but there are many other countries. The the, the UK. The UK is also a country whose public health system we have high respect for. A number of Grenadians that have gone to the UK and continue to work in the UK within the public health system. And we have complete faith in the UK public health system as well. And the UK public health system has completely approved the AstraZeneca and is using it significantly in their population. And you don't have people dropping down and dying from taking the vaccine in the UK. So, so the FDA has chosen one route and the United Kingdom has chosen another route. And the government of Grenada has said, we will not accept any vaccine that is not approved by the WHO, no matter who wants to give us. So if Pfizer and Moderna were not approved by the WHO, we would not accept it, no matter how much the US wanted to give it to us, and no matter how many people in the US were using it, we would not accept it. The, right. the, the Sputnik vaccine by, in Russia is not approved by the WHO as yet. We are not contemplating it and will not contemplate having it used in Grenada. The Chinese vaccine, Sinopharm, was recently uh, uh, approved by the WHO. The Cuban vaccine, we keep looking and we have complete faith in all of the systems. And many Grenadians have expressed their faith in 
the Cuban vaccine. So we have in that situation, a number of Grenadians who are saying they are prepared to take the Cuban vaccine. And still we would not make it available to them as much as we want people to take any vaccine that is effective and believe that the Cuban vaccine would be effective. But we will not use a vaccine that is not approved by the WHO. Right. And the second part of the question, he was asking about the cricket and procedures yeah. and protocol for the cricket. cricket. There's extreme, extreme protocols, much stiffer than the protocols for the average individual coming into Grenada and spending time in quarantine that surrounds the, the cricketers that are coming in to play, the team, the support network, the journals, journalists, etc. And we are saying simply, and fundraisers, somebody wants to have a fundraiser, large fundraiser with, with, with fully vaccinated people only, we support it. The, the GFA Football Association is going to be having a, 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 a match coming up and we support fully vaccinated persons attending. The individuals who have asked for, for bingo and, and other events, and they have our blessing because all the persons there are fully vaccinated. We want to get to where there is no longer, why, why, why are we perpetuating this? You have to ask permission. We are saying clearly, if we're all vaccinated, there's no more of this asking permission. We go back to freedom. There's no public right. health challenge at that point. So, so that is what we want to get to. I saw, and my, my, my CMO gave me a report of an individual who asked uh, this week to have a family gathering, just a little family social above the numbers and said, hey, but everybody there would be is fully vaccinated and there was an automatic approval. Yes, mm -hmm. you can have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they are, they are approval for events that could guarantee uh, a group of people that, that, that are fully vaccinated. Okay. Okay. All right. Let, let's take this call. Next call on the line. Call it live. Where are you calling us from? Yeah. So, Junet, just let me add to that. It's not that we've given the cricket or, or football association special preference. We right. It is time now, and we are now able to give approval to fully vaccinated events so that's the protocol going forward approval yes. for fully vaccinated events no matter what size of the event you can have large and we said we are testing it and the, the, the first one that we announced is a large national event the cricket and the football they are approved okay. to have spectators in the stadium uh, uh once all spectators are fully vaccinated Hmm. I want to get back to that, but I want to take this caller. Uh, they've been holding for a while. Caller, are you, are you hearing me? Hey, Junior. Yeah, hi. Go, go ahead. Where are you calling us from? Uh, I'll call you from Grenada. Go right ahead, caller. Uh, yeah, I would just call this is one from uh, Mr. S Mr. Steele. Uh, Honorable Mr. Steele. Uh, thank you for coming in up to be on the hot seat. A question for you, sir. Are you aware if there is someone right now as we speak, hospitalized because they're taking the because they take the vaccine, and they were they were bleeding through the mouth, and um and, and right now at the at the hospital, uh, where right now they are, they, they are hospitalized at the hospital in Saint George's, and they, they told the, they told her they told her they they they, 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 they know they told the, the family member the witness the COVID team to come in to look after her. Are you aware of that? Yeah, caller, then, caller, question is for you, sir. Okay, caller. Let, 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 individuals, yes, they have to wait on the huh? test. Oh, hold on a second, caller. Give him give minister opportunity to respond. Go ahead, minister. Yeah, regardless of whether somebody is vaccinated or not, at this point in time, and it depends on how long they were vaccinated. Did they only receive their first dose? Mm -hmm. Has Fourteen days passed since their their second dose, so the hospital would be in their right to do a COVID-19 test before they, they, they do the full treatment or to safeguard everybody else, including those who are given the treatment. Now, somebody ending up in hospital 
within a certain time frame of taking a vaccine is not somebody ending up in hospital because of the vaccine. So I think we need to be careful on that. You're saying the person was bleeding through the mouth or so, or, or wherever. That, that is also medical condition from other things. So the vaccine doesn't cure all of your ailments. The vaccine protects you from COVID-19. And if there was an, another ailment that you had that wasn't addressed and you ended up in hospital after some time after taking the vaccine, whether a day, an hour, a month afterwards, it cannot automatically be attributed to the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right call, call up. Thanks for your input. One, one additional thing, Junior. I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but for those medically trained out there, for them to decide and say for themselves to that call or others whether bleeding can be associated with blood clots. So remember, blood Hello. clots are not bleeding. Blood clots is a blood clotting, so it's not going to be just freely running from the mouth or from any orifice. So blood clot risk that's associated or implied with the AstraZeneca vaccine. To me, as a lay person with what little I know of biology, uh, it can't be associated with somebody bleeding from the mouth. It would be associated with a stroke. It would be associated with a heart attack, something like that. What right. little I know. But I put that out there for the other medical persons listening to comment on. We have another call on the line, but I have a quick question as it relates to any of the symptoms that we see, uh, blood clots or anything else. Have we experienced, or anyone in Grenada, after taking the vaccine, experienced any severe symptoms? Besides the... Not, and, and, and to be honest, we are, have been looking. Most definitely been looking. We have not. We have had one or two individuals have adverse reactions, allergic reactions to the vaccine and they've been treated with the medication and have been fine no problems that's why we take the safeguards that's why we say when you come to be vaccinated you must still sit with us for 20 minutes to be yeah. observed and we have the doctors and nurses on standby to deal with any reactions and that is the same for any of the other vaccines that 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 are used in our immunization process whether yeah. it is measles mumps rubella any of the other vaccines that is and that's not just a grenada thing that's a worldwide thing and that's not just an astrazeneca thing that's a for all vaccines yeah yeah I, I had to do the same thing as well let's jump back to the phone line you know. and did you did you get the astrazeneca i got the Fi pfizer exactly so the same yeah. procedures are used for any and all vaccines yeah yeah, right, let's go back to the phone lines uh, right now. Caller, go right ahead. Hi, good evening, Junior. Good evening, Mr. Steele. Good evening. Where are you calling us from? Um, my question is... go, go ahead, caller. Go ahead. Yes. Um. So I'm fully vaccinated. My my dad is fully vaccinated. We live in the same house, and we ha I have a 12 year old who got the first shot. And I have two underage kids who they don't have vaccine for them approved yet. So we have a house in Grenada that's completely that's completely um empty, unoccupied. So how do we go about? We want to come in Grenada this month, actually. How do we go about um applying for home quarantine, or do we have to go into a facility? So I think that uh, if if you do have uh, a house that nobody is there. So and is you, the, can go in. you can come to Grenada and home quarantine so once your house meets people. Sorry, sorry, hold on. Hold on, hold on one second. He's responding to you. Yeah, you, you can apply for home quarantine. Uh, one, the, the inspection process is to make sure that, that, that there's no one else around there, that, that you can safely, without interacting with, with anyone else in the neighborhood, etc., uh spend time in home quarantine now being fully vaccinated is one of the criterias now of being able to go into home quarantine traveling with young children is also another criteria being able to go into home quarantine 
So you having young kids who are not vaccinated, still you have young kids. So that is a criteria that allows you to go into home quarantine once no one else is in that home except your travel party. Regrettably though, and it will be determined by the chief medical officer and the medical team here, it may be that because although there are young kids who cannot access the vaccine, that you would still have to spend the seven days quarantine, but you can do it at home because the, the policy with respect to vaccination and, and quarantine is based on the, the significantly reduced risk if any, of someone who is fully vaccinated being able to catch and spread COVID-19. However, having young kids who are not yet vaccinated still poses a risk. And that is why from the, the, the position of the chief medical officer and the COVID advisory committee that, that individuals who are not vaccinated and are not five and under, then the entire party must be treated as unvaccinated and you have to stay the seven days. I regret that and I look forward to when we can remove that. And again, I want to say that our reason for, 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 for that hardship that you have to endure is to protect the population here in Grenada, but more importantly, it's not to protect individuals like me who are fully vaccinated. It is to protect a significant percentage of our population who are still not yet vaccinated. And we cannot take that risk of them, even though they have made the choice to date not to be vaccinated. We still have an obligation as a government, responsible government, to protect them from COVID-19. And as such, we need to make sure that any individual, regardless of age, who is not vaccinated entering the state of Grenada spend seven days quarantine all right we got another call uh mr still let me tell you you're in the hot seat today i don't envy you today's a day i don't envy you eh? i'm telling you right now i'm calling you live where are you calling us from hi call it right ahead i want to i, I want to say something to mr still because he made a, a a point where he said that um once you get vaccinated that um, you sit for 20 minutes or 25 minutes, depending on where you go, and um, they monitor you. But I want him to know, you don't get tw you don't get side effects in 20 minutes. You don't get it. Because I took the Pfizer vaccine. It did not affect me a day after I took it. It affected me days after, and I almost died. And I took Pfizer. So you can't sit there and say that someone who takes it is going to have a side effect in 20 minutes. I work in the hospital. I look after COVID-19 patients. So I, I made a choice to take it. That's my choice. But you can't sit there. My daughter took Moderna and she almost died. So don't sit there and say that you're going to get Or if somebody, someone just said, that the woman took it or a man took the, 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 the vaccine and they're having bleeding after. And then you're trying to justify it with that person having something that causes it. You can't say that, Mr. So these are things that you have to look into. Because if that person never had blood bleeding or excessive bleeding before, and after they took it, a couple of days after, they're having bleeding, which means that something is wrong. I went to the emergency here in Canada three times before they realized that it was the vaccine I took that almost killed me. So don't sit there and say that if people have concerns, you as the Minister of Health, you have to bring them and you, 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 I want the people to take it because I know what it is. I know what it's like to look after COVID-19 patients. I know what it's like to even to see people dying. Yeah. The Grenadian people want you to give them the assurance that when they do take it, they're not going to die. You will not know. Yeah. But you have to be convincing, Mr. Steele. And you're not convincing. I you have it. to be convincing. Let's give him an opportunity you, you really to have to. 
let's give him an opportunity to respond. Uh, to, uh, let me say, Trick, is that I, I want to be as diplomatic as possible and fair to the caller because a caller took the vaccine and said that the caller works in, in, in healthcare. But so the caller would have heard me say that you stayed 20 minutes for adverse reactions. The vaccine does give you side effects. Many people get fever, many people get aches and pains, soreness on the site, headache. Those are, we don't hide that. We tell you clearly. In fact, many people come even before or immediately after taking the vaccine, they'll take a Panadol or they'll take some, some sort of fever medication or medication for, for aches and pains. But if the caller is in healthcare, then the caller will also recognize that there is no statement as to what is causing the bleeding of that patient that she's referring to. And if the caller did work or does work in a hospital environment, the caller would know that there are many other conditions. And the caller says that, that I don't know or she doesn't know whether the person had bleeding before or not. Exactly. We don't. We right. don't. So why are we having a conversation that the cause is from the vaccine? We don't know. We are saying that if it is, it will be said because we have to report it and we will report it. But somebody in hospital bleeding, why is it that the general consensus has to be that it's from the vaccine? Because are you telling me that nobody ended up in, in, in hospital before with bleeding from the mouth? But that never happened until the introduction of the AstraZeneca vaccine. No one, that, that individual never treated anybody in hospital. Nobody ever got to hospital with bleeding until this introduction of the vaccine. That is not the case. So I'm just saying, let us be cautious. COVID-19, I believe over the last year, all of us, myself included, you too, Junior, I'm sure, we've become very anxious individuals because we've spent the last year hearing so many negative things and the possibility of death and being told what not to do, being prevented from doing what, what, what keeps us mentally stable, outdoor time, socializing with friends, et cetera. So we gotta be very cautious that we are too quick to assume that it is a vaccine or that it is the government or that it is a cover up or that there is a conspiracy here. And, and let us be the people that we are, which is let us wait to get more information. Let us ask. Let us ask the simple question that I just asked. Was it possible for somebody to end up in hospital with bleeding from the mouth before the introduction of COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Right. Let me fix something real quick on the line. Call are you live? Where are you calling us from? Uh, good evening, Julie. I'm calling from New York. Go right ahead, New York. Um, Mr. Mr. Steele, good evening to you. And, um, I have a question. I wish Mr. Steele could clarify on that. Okay. People traveling from abroad and coming to Grenada, as respect to the people who do not have the, um, the shots of the, you know, the vaccine and has to be quarantined. We have seen in the past, or uh, we have heard in the past also, because we had folks on the live. While they were in quarantine, what a home or government facility, the communication line between the, the quarantine party and the people that is responsible for giving them the results of the, the test, the communication is, is broken. They have to be in quarantine for seven days, eight, nine, ten, eleven days. They are still in quarantine. Nobody is get communicating with them or even if they're trying to reach somebody to find out well, what's my results or so on and so forth that communication barrier is lacking right okay. so i don't know if those things have reached to your your knowledge but this needs to be fixed because most times people traveling from abroad and come to Grenada, they're going to be there for maybe a week or two Right. And somebody come in and have to spend 12 and 13 days in quarantine. Yeah. It's uh, not fun. They, yeah, should be, they should be treated with respect. If you said we're going to be in quarantine for seven days, even if the result is not ready or something, communicate with that person. Right. And let them know 
what is going on and you have them just stay by themselves frustrated and worried you yeah. can't get communication from nobody Grenada, i don't know if it's still um eight to four nine to five don't open on saturdays and sundays and this is frustrating yeah. this problem well, let's, let's, let's give let's give let's give the much. minister opportunity to respond we, yeah. I, 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 I got it uh, right. is perfect and our system by no means is is, is, is perfect we we have had and 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 still on some occasions individuals who are not communicated to in the way they should be in a timely manner uh with respect to to them being in quarantine and being updated to to alleviate their anxiety while they're in quarantine we we have also had delays in testing and this is not unique to Grenada. In fact, uh, last week, we received numerous requests from individuals or questions from individuals, concerns from individuals who were traveling to Grenada over the labor or immediately after the Memorial Day weekend. And that testing in certain states or certain boroughs and so was not available on Monday. Memorial Day because it was a public holiday. So it's not a problem unique to Grenada. Remember, it is healthcare workers that are there manning those phones and etc. Mm -hmm. And in some instances on the holiday, yes, the lab do either sometimes does not test for battle fatigue. These guys have been at it for a year plus. And sometimes the calls do not go out in a timely manner. And I do take offense with them for the calls not going out. They should. But my team is trying its best. And there is no country, no country in the world that has been able to maintain a perfect record with respect to any of the protocols or procedures of COVID-19. Whether it is quarantine, whether it is the testing, etc., or at hospital if yeah. it gets to that. So I admit the faults. I apologize for the faults and delays or lack of communication. And we try our best and continue to, to remedy the situation. Within the next couple of days, we will be introducing a, a, a different system of communicating in an effort to improve. And we are not the only country in the world that is doing that. Yeah, because you, you, you know, I can show on some of the hotlines, etc. I've read numerous reports from Canada as well. I have friends and family in Canada trying to get an appointment to get a vaccine or trying to get an appointment to get a test. Many of you in New York, with all of the budget that New York has and the ability that New York has, you still have difficulties getting a test in a timely manner in well, New York. Not, not anymore, not anymore. They, they yeah, are. But we got calls from persons in the last week saying that they they, they would not be able to get the test. No, that, that's but true. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. No, we did find for ourselves. Yeah. We went and did our own research, contacted our consulate in New York, and, 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 and was able for, for those who contacted us directly to give them links to sites that we found that were open. But that's us finding information. Yeah. That's Little Grenada finding information. Right. On, on New yep. York, so I, I I agree. I'm not saying that that was the reality. I'm saying that individuals had difficulty finding a place. I'm not saying that there wasn't because I I know for a fact that there are many places within New York and in most states in in the U.S. now that are open 24/7, regardless of public holiday or not, for you to get a PCR test because people are coming daily. Right. People still need it on those flights, but there is sometimes a difficulty with communication and accessing of information which is not that the information is not there which is not that the solution isn't there which is not that the individuals purposely uh, uh did not make an effort or so but that we do falter right we do falter so so i asked the individual who who had a bad experience being in quarantine and had to stay longer to, to accept my apologies on behalf of, of, of the government and the team and 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 to 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 please acknowledge that that the individuals continue to try to do their best which also means continue to try to consistently improve
Yeah. Um, one of the most consistent calls I've been getting and complaints I've been getting about the health authorities in Grenada is that when people call in, they're just not getting a, uh, someone answering the phone or they're getting transferred and transferred. And then when they can't get nobody, they call me. So I have a huge and, 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 then and then I call and then I call you. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's the thing that is, and that is what over the next week or so we're we're, we're trying to, to solve. What has happened and been one of the, 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 the reasons for it as well is is that we've had a, a, a sort of a cyclical period with respect to the demand on the calls. Remember the, the, the call center is for, for COVID in general, quarantine as well, and we we we, we divert the calls as best as possible. But for instance, in the last month, we've moved from an average of 100, 150 persons maximum in quarantine to up to 500 people. Right. Now, this is still Little Grenada. 500 people sounds like a small amount, but you're talking about almost three times the amount that we would have had before. So ability to respond, react, and adjust is, is being tried and tested. So we have to adjust now to the 500 persons that would be in quarantine as opposed to the 100 persons. And we will adjust. We will right. adjust. But okay. this is still a developing country and there's still limited budgets. But we will continue to improve and adjust to try to serve the public at large here in Grenada. And in particular, our visiting diaspora who are coming home and I understand are anxious to do this mandatory quarantine that they don't like and want to get to meet their family or in some instances it is to go to a funeral because a loved one has passed away or so so i understand their anxiety and that's a big anxiety then let's take another call mr Sil, i hope you have at least about 10 more minutes do you have about 10 more minutes i got about five junior five minutes okay five minutes we'll, we'll make it snappy caller we are on a time we have a time limit um go ahead ask your question quick where are you calling us from hello Hi, go right ahead. Yes, that statement that Mr. Steele just made about tests in in New York. You can get a test in New York. Yeah, now we establish that. Yeah, we establish that. We establish that. Test is. is... No, caller, caller, I agree. I, I'm saying we receive calls. You have to make an appointment to get a vaccine. To just walk in and get a vaccine. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes caller. Let me reiterate, Junior, for that caller. I agree that it is possible to get a test 24, almost 24 seven or seven days a week in New York. Yes. I agree. But I'm saying persons called us to say that they couldn't. And yes. we have to go find the information to give them. Right. Okay. All right. One other thing I want to touch on real quickly. I want to talk about the protocol, right? And I have one recommendation. I did a whole vlog on this. So help me out here. A lot of people have been contacting me about the language in this particular item on the protocol. Travelers who are considered fully vaccinated. And that two weeks clause that is written there, two weeks after the second dose in, in, a, in, a, two dose, in a two dose series, such as AstraZeneca and Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. Now, that two weeks, Mr. Steele, it is really tripping up a lot of people, right? Because people are thinking in the two weeks, going into the two weeks, after one week is two weeks. So, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm asking, if the language could have been a little bit clearer, instead of just having two weeks, which some people are getting contradicted, why not have 14 days? Why not spell it out so people could understand? Because a lot of people came to the shores and they are not over that two weeks period and they have to go to quarantine and they don't understand. I get calls like crazy on that. Right. No, Junior, I, I have no problem with that. I accept that. We can change and we can put 14 days in brackets or, or two weeks in brackets and 14 days. Yes, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them to make that, that adjustment. I yeah. That's a reasonable point. Yeah, and that, that would help a lot because I, I, there, there are actually four individuals who um, misunderstood that particular protocol. And also, if you could clearly tell us the protocol as it relates to vaccinated people coming in um, or to the shores. And like, quarantine. I, like I, oh, to, 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 to use two weeks or 14 days. Right. And that is us adopting the WHO policy, which says that after your second dose or with respect to a single dose vaccine, after 14 days, you are at your full immunity that you would have received from that vaccine yeah yeah and 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 they have to be 14 days 
they have to be vaccinated for, previously to 14 days. So they, when they get there, days prior to arriving to Grenada, to arriving in Grenada, yeah. and that has to be that has to be clear. Um, anything else? I know. That, listen, we could have been here for two hours, and we could have get calls on each street. Anything else you wanna you wanna clarify, um, Mr. Steele? As always, thank you for the opportunity. Um, and it is always interesting to interact with our diaspora um, as opposed to our local uh, population here because sometimes the views are different or then the experience most definitely has been different throughout this entire pandemic. Uh, uh, New York got hit first and some of our, our first casualties of loved ones and so were from our diaspora and still continues to be. I lost very good friends from the New York area uh, from to, to COVID-19. Um, we are all connected because we are Grenadians and we hold Grenada near and dear. And, and as a result, that's why I appreciate this opportunity and recognize that you have a following in the diaspora and locally as well. You receive calls tonight from persons in Grenada. Uh, so, so I appreciate that and look forward to other opportunities for us to 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 get to communicate with each other. There's somebody. There have been a couple people that keep putting in to, that you should be asking about the PCR test. Yes, yes, uh, that, yes. yes. I want to I want to cue that in. <laughs> just throw that there. So I'm not sure specifically what. So I'll try to the cost the cost, the cost right. The cost is the cost that, it, that the government incurs for the PCR test in terms of the materials, the labor, et cetera. It is more expensive than, than it may be in other countries and so. Some countries subsidize that cost and, and, and other countries do not. Some countries, based on the size and their volume of ordering, uh, you would find that it costs a lot less. Same with medications, et cetera. Some countries produce the materials used in the test and therefore don't have to export it or, or sorry, import it or transport it by air, etc. Quite a lot of the, the, the uh, things that we use for the PCR test are what we refer to as cold chain. Not only do they have to be flown in by air, but they have to be flown in by air keeping a certain temperature as well to do the test. We have placed that cost. I do regret that cost, but to date, to date, the cost to the population, let me say it that way, because individuals have paid for that. The cost is $13 million upwards that individuals have paid for mm -hmm. that test. These are individuals that have paid that to come home or to visit Grenada. This is money that could have been spent elsewhere. This is money that could have been spent in healthcare, in education, as donations or so, as a tax, whatever. This has purely been just to know the status, COVID-wise, of somebody entering Grenada. Mm -hmm. There's no added value to it except that, to know the status and therefore to allow individuals to, to be released from quarantine or isolation when we have community spread. It is time that we are able, and I agree, that we get to the position of not having that test and not having individuals pay for that test. What we need to do is to remove the risk of COVID-19, then we don't need to test to see if you have COVID-19. Mm -hmm. If we can remove the risk by having the right percentage of a population while respecting that there will still be some individuals who either cannot take the vaccine for medical reasons or choose not to. But we do need to get to that percentage so that we can stop that test. And then maybe put a little piggy bank donation box for persons to give if they want to yeah to education to health care to 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 whatever cause in grenada instead and let them choose where they'd like to spend the 405 ec dollars 
when they visit the data. I look forward to that, and that's where we want to get to. It's time that 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 when we when I get this opportunity to be on your program, Junior, and to discuss issues of importance to us relevant to Grenada, that is not COVID-19. That is something else. Yeah, that, I would, I would actually love that. There. We can get there. We need to get there. There's so many other things as a diaspora, as a people with a common connection that we need to be talking about critically or, or, or uh, uh, hypothetically or in terms of giving credit to. There's so many other things that we need to talk about. Uh, so we let, let us work together to put COVID-19 behind us. I cannot accept that, that, that come Christmas, come next year, that we're still going to be talking about COVID-19, that we're still going to have this PCR test, that we're still going to have the quarantine, that we're still going to have the restricted movements, that we still have to ask permission to have parties, that you still have to go on this system online to apply to come home. We can't have that. And we all know and we all recognize that if we're all vaccinated, those things go. Definitely. There's yeah. absolutely, absolutely no reason to have any of those. If we get to that level of vaccination, you're seeing other countries that have gotten to that level or close to that level. Look at Israel. They can remove most of those restrictions. So we are looking forward to being able to follow and be in that position. We don't test for, for, for measles. We don't test for, for, for polio. And that is what we want to get to. And we need to get to. So, so, so I hope we can all work together to get there. Yeah. And what is the correct link website that folks go to for all the updates as it relates to protocol and also to get the home quarantine application covid19 not covid-19 covid19.health.gov.gd all right I, I want one of my producers to put that in there um because people have been asking that information uh say one more time so they could write it down there i could pin it COVID-19, say it again. COVID19.health.gov.gd. That hell.gov.gd. We are also going to put the link right here. Okay, Dion Freeze, I got it. Well, uh, I was about to say, otherwise, check Junior George. Yeah, check me, check me. I'll, I'll, I'll post the information there for you guys. Yeah, and is. listen, I, 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 I know it's not a popular thing and you haven't been getting that a lot because there's so much there's so much information that's spurring out there but i want to thank your team because 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 of the hard work that you guys have done over the past year people in grenada could breathe a sigh of relief because i hear people walking on st george's they don't even have a mask and they sometimes think right how are we able to get here the fact is that i think that the team I mean, you guys made a lot of mistakes. I, ain't gonna, I, I mean, I blaze you all all the time. You know, I give you fire. But because of the hard work that your team has done, people could feel that, that, that sense that there are zero cases in Grenada. There are, there are no cases in Grenada. So I want to I wanna congratulate and thank you and the team for hard work. But that doesn't mean that you have to sleep because COVID-19 is not gone. The work now is to, is, to, is to educate the population as to the reason behind why they should get vaccinated. And, and so we could reach some kind of herd immunity of some sort and um, educate the, the messengers as well, like the doctors and, and everybody else, even the politicians. I don't know how much politicians are, are, took the vaccine, but they are also, uh, you know, influential figures that should be talking about it. And artists and all these people should be talking about and educating the population about the vaccine. So I want to thank you and congratulate you for coming on here as well. Appreciate it. Yeah, Junior, I want to thank you and, and thank all of the individuals who to date have come forward and taken the vaccine, not just here, but we're seeing a considerable amount. There's up to 20, somewhere between 20 to 40% on certain flights of, of, of Grenadians who are coming back home that are fully vaccinated now. Um, so it's not just those of us who are here, but, but many of us are doing our part as well up there to end this pandemic. It's not a Grenadian thing. It's a worldwide thing. True. And, and I, I do believe I have faith in humanity. I have faith in our people that we will get there. Right now, we may be suffering from our own success in terms of people feeling 
comfortable and not at risk. But I do look forward to that day that we remove the risk completely and not just have a period of safety and a pendulum between uh, uh, freedom of movements as best as possible and then restrictions because we have an outbreak uh, and, and, and have individuals who sneak into the country and, and, and move freely among us without taking the, the, the various protective measures. I want us to get back to the point that the only protective measure we need to take while traveling is to scan our baggage and go through the, the, the uh, security to look for, for, for bombs, etc. And, and, and so and let's, let's remove all of these formalities and inconveniences and costs yes. that we have to protect us from COVID-19. Yes. And one last request, and I, I will say it uh, because I, everyone has been coming to me. Um, the people, they like the information, they like to be educated, they make responsible decisions when they are educated uh, about the vaccine. And um, they promise, promise, they say promise that you will never lie to them as it relates to any information that you receive about the vaccine. <laughs> and be clear with the people and let them know all the side effects, what to expect, so they could make, they themselves could make educated decisions for their own self. And I think we see an uptick in, in the, in the uh, vaccine. Yeah, well, I agree 100%. And remember, AstraZeneca vaccine is not a Grenada vaccine. It's a worldwide vaccine countries that have made various statements but the facts are the facts if that vaccine were killing people people would be dropping down like flies in the uk yeah and that's not the case in fact the opposite less and less people daily weekly are, are, are succumbing to covid 19 and there are less and less deaths in the uk and cases in the uk because of the widespread use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. In the US, less and less people are dying and succumbing to COVID-19 because of the widespread use of vaccinations. In Trinidad, look at the death rate there and tell me how many of the people dying in Trinidad regrettably and succumbing to COVID-19 are fully vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. And, I, none. and also, I gotta tell, I gotta say publicly again, uh, we go in a way uh, over. Um, when I had, um, when I had COVID, um, Minister Steele um, called me almost every day to check up, and I appreciate that, and I, I thank you. As much fire as, as, as I just give you, you don't take it personal. And I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I never told people you got COVID. I left it to you to tell them. <laughs> to, to tell them that I was calling you. But the difference is, Junior, uh, when you told me you got vaccinated, I didn't call you after that. I didn't have to. Yeah, true. Are good, are good, are good, and 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 I continue to tell people. I said, go ahead and take the get educated about it. I did, and I got the vaccine. I think you guys should take it as well. That's just me to you, but you guys do your own study on it. We need to get back to some form of normalcy. Minister Steele, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We we have to do it again. Not so long. We don't have to wait another year to talk again. You know? We will. We will. All right. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you as always, and let's keep in touch. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was um, Minister Steele. Yeah, on the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, to what I'm saying, right? Um, I think it. I think people make much better decision when they're educated about the COVID vaccine, right? But also what I think is very, very important, probably more important than anything else, is the messenger. The people who are talking to or conveying that message, right? The messenger probably bad. Because I'm telling you, I've learned, and, and people told me, they're not taking the vaccine because the doctors are not taking the vaccine either. So if you depend on your doctor for medical advice, and your doctor doesn't even support the, the vaccine, you don't want to take it either. But I have a lot of friends in the medical field, Wendy and, and all these people who give me so much information. I did all, all my research, and I felt comfortable enough, guys, 
to take the vaccine. I took the vaccine. All my family members took the vaccine. My mother took the vaccine and she's 70 something years old. And I'm, I'm, I'm able to go in, in parties. I'm, I'm in parties sometimes, right? Recently, I was in a party sometime last week and I felt safe, right? And mostly all my friends in my circle have the vaccine. But listen, that is not me telling you that you have to go and do this tomorrow. You do your own research. From my own re research, I figured out and I know that the vaccine is safe and effective, right? For everyone in my circle. But that's a decision that you have to make. That is a personal choice that you have to make. All right? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I got to tell you guys about this. Now, we are moving a lot of our broadcast over to YouTube, right? So, everyone, I want you guys, I'm going to paste the link right now. I want you guys to go on the YouTube channel right now and subscribe. I'm, I'm pasting the link right there, right? I want you guys to click that link and subscribe to us on YouTube. Because soon, that's the only place you'll be able to watch right along over on YouTube. So, go ahead and do it right now. I just paste the link somewhere in there, I think. Um, let me paste it again. Let me paste the link again. So you guys could go over there and subscribe to us on YouTube. Deanne, if you could, Deanne, if you could um pin or, or Lynn or somebody, could you just pin the the um the YouTube channel? Just pin it for me. Alright? Yeah, guys, so soon that's the only way that you guys will be able to um to to to, to watch right along. So click on that link right now and subscribe to us on YouTube. We, we, we look forward to having you guys on YouTube as we build that platform over there. We'll be having a lot of problems on this platform, guys. A lot of problems. And you guys know it. Um, I don't know why it's not. Okay, Lynn, let me Lynn, let me send it to you and then you pin it then. Lynn, I'll send it to you on your WhatsApp. Lynn, I'm going to send it to you on your WhatsApp. Oh, man, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right, let me let me see. Let me see where I could find it, Lynn. And I, and I want you guys to do this for me. Go over to that YouTube link. Then I'm going to send it to you right now. And then you just go ahead and uh, and pin it. Uh, hold on. Lynn, I sent it to you on your... Um, Lynn, I sent it to you on your WhatsApp. Then I sent it to you on your WhatsApp. Just pin that information there for me, guys. Uh, Lynn. Um, that's our WhatsApp. That's our YouTube, our YouTube uh, channel. I want you guys to go over there and um, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Because again, soon all our programming will be on YouTube. It's easier. You could watch it on your TV. Um, and the access is going to be a little bit better for everyone. And we won't have all this notification problem. But when you go back to YouTube and you subscribe. Yeah, that's it, right? They pin it as well. When you go over there on, your, on YouTube and you subscribe, I want you to also press that that bell, that notification bell. So whenever we go live, you'll get notification. So click that link right now. Right? Click that link. And subscribe. Everybody, I want everybody to do it. Please, do it for me. Right? We have to build up the numbers over there before we can move the channel. Right? Pin that. Um, subscribe. And then um, the sooner we do this, the sooner we could we could move our programming programming over on the YouTube platform. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Um, I know. Sorry, we didn't get to every single question, guys. Um, but we only had a limited time. But I promise you, we're gonna have the minister again back soon. It's probably gonna go take all this time as it, it's been almost. Almost six months to a year, the minister haven't been on the program. So I know that there's a lot of questions. And where there's a lot of questions, people get anxiety, right? And I understand the anxiety that exists. And um, let's hope that we could, we, could get, we could get more information more quickly. So you don't have to wait all this time. People have hundreds of questions and have so much problems. We could address it. People could feel more, more reassured because they get information. Look, look, how much people got the information that they wanted. I know we didn't get to everything, but we get to a lot of questions that people was asking. Yeah? And we're happy. We're happy to do that. Okay, he has pain. Okay, guys, so it's pain right now. I want you guys to go ahead and click that link as soon as you get off here. Go ahead and click that link and subscribe to us on YouTube. 
and when you subscribe i want you to say i subscribe right when you subscribe i want you to say i subscribe ah there we go that's it right there subscribe to us on youtube um because again you may not be able you may not see this program here um for the next couple weeks or so let me just say this before i go the final thing um darren lang i see you over on, on youtube let me say the, the, the final thing before i go right um as it relates to travelers that consider that that are considered vaccinated right so if you're fully vaccinated which means that you would have gotten the 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 two dose the second dose of your two dose regimen vaccine um 14 days before arriving into grenada 14 days or two weeks but 14 days at least 14 days after your second dose so if you're 13 days or 12 days and you get to grenada that is not considered fully vaccinated right Teresa, thank you so much. I see you. June, thank you so much. Darren Lang, I see you. So guys, remember that because a lot of people are going to Grenada and they are into the third, this, this second week, but not completely 14 days. And I get a lot of calls. I get so many calls from people who said, I'm in 14 days, but I never said that. I mean, I'm in two weeks, but I never said 14 days. So I'm making it very clear right now. 14 days so if you're going to go to grenada and you want that short quarantine which is only two days right you have to be fully vaccinated and fully vaccinated mean two weeks or 14 days right after the second dose series such as at astrazeneca pfizer or moderna all right remember that guys remember that uh, remember that i can't stress that enough 14 days or two weeks now if you are vaccinated your husband is vaccinated your sister is vaccinated but your cousin is not vaccinated your whole entire party the whole entire party is considered not vaccinated so in order for it to be considered fully vaccinated every person in your party should be fully vaccinated now if you're traveling with a kid that is 12 13 they don't have the the vaccine for them as yet they would not consider their group as fully vaccinated you would have to go to the full seven days of quarantine okay all this information guys all this information that we talked that we spoke about today is available on the website let me see if i could post it get it from where Deanne fraser pinned it earlier uh let me see if i could get it from with Deanne fraser I can't get it but we'll also pin the website where people could get information direct information on covid 19 protocols it changes daily right ezra thank you so much for subscribing it changes daily so to get that information we're going to pin that on the website as well and guys listen at the end of the day i've seen too much people just quarreling and cursing and everything is politics these days everything is politics man listen i i hate to see people fighting and making so much noise eh? we all in this together all right we all in this together we may have difference of opinion you might not see it the way how i see it but i'd rather cuss you or your mother and all this stuff if i just want to get get my point across i could be respectfully disagreeing with you like the minister i disagree with the minister on a lot of different things right and I voice my opinion. I don't go and disrespect them and cost out them. I mean, you guys see this, right? We could have a conversation today with a member of the of the government. Tomorrow we could have an a, a interview with a, a someone from TGM or someone from a different political organization. It's not political. It's just that everyone have their point of view. And their point of view needs to be ventilated. You just have to respect people's point of view. That's all it is. Respect people's point of view. Respect people for a point of view. And that's all we're saying. Junior, didn't they approve vaccine for 12-year-old in the U.S. here? Yes, yes, Teresa, yes, they did. Yes, they did. And that's a whole other topic, a whole other conversation. L.A. Philip, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Lenora, thank you for subscribing. That's a whole other topic there we're going to touch on as well. Um, yeah 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 okay she said that in canada they approve for 12 year old and that is true that is true that's true they have not um 
they have not yet they don't have this vaccine in grenada as yet they don't have it in grenada as yet um i don't believe but i know that they do have uh the vaccine in canada and the us as well all right i'm aware of that so correct is right the website guys is covid19.health.gov.gd that's the website that that's covid19.health.gov.gd uh for folks who want information updated information before you travel get the updates on all information vaccine related all right um also junior also booster available in september from pfizer most likely okay all right thanks again guys uh, we backed up with ads. I gotta run some ads, guys, before I get fired. Guess again tomorrow we have a member of TGM tomorrow on Ride Along. We're gonna pose the hard question: Is TGM ready for prime time? We're gonna find out from a member from TGM. It's gonna be on the ride tomorrow. Tune in. We got a date tomorrow. Also, guys, from tomorrow onwards, I'll be broadcasting live from Jamaica. So all my friends and family and supporters in Jamaica, we're gonna be in your bucket. I'm gonna be broadcasting live from Jamaica from tomorrow all right catch you guys again tomorrow peace out catch you later bye David Williams Funeral Service serve you with dignity and compassion as you mourn. Every day, we embark on... David Williams Funeral Service serve you with dignity and compassion as you mourn. Every day, we embark on the journey of life and one day, the journey will end. It's on that day that you can entrust the celebration of life of your loved ones to David Williams Funeral Service. Call 718-291-3823. My name is Halusma aka Mr. Killer. Why should I drink any other rum than Clark's Court rum? When Clark's Court is the rum that supports my community, my culture, my country. A long time ago, my ancestors used to work in the cane fields. Today, we own the rum. Clark's Court rum. Grenada's number one rum. But my people, if you drink, don't drive. When you drink, drink responsibly. And if you're under 18, don't drink at all. Clark Scott Rum, Grenada's number one rum. Welcome to TD Bank, where you'll find the personalized attention you deserve and the legendary experience you expect. Let's do business. If you are a medical or dental practitioner, contact me to hear about our tailored lending solutions for residential mortgages, equipment purchases, practice related commercial mortgages and refinance visit me at 500 baychester avenue to hear more about our full range of personal and small business banking solutions see you soon Are you fed up of your mask or your foggy face shield? Introducing the Fashion Shield from CallAllProNow.com. Keep your hair do intact, your makeup flawless, and be fully protected. Get the Fashion Shield now. Call 516-387-4246 or visit CallAllProNow.com. Thank you.